Hey, today I'll be talking to you about the theory of continental drift. In 1915, Alpha Wagner proposed the theory of continental drift. He claimed that all the continents about 200 million years ago once joined in a supercontinent called Pangaea, which meant all lands. The continents which composed of lighter granitic rock plowed through the denser basalts of the ocean floor with the aid of forces related to the rotation of the earth. This movement caused Pangaea to split up and form two smaller continents which are Laurasia and Gondwana land. Further drifting and breaking away of land masses have resulted in the relocation of continents as we see them today. Wagner's theory was based on a variety of geologic evidences. There was a total of five evidences, one of which is continental refits. Wagner observed that the shorelines and continental shells of several continents matched. For example, continents of South America and Africa fit nicely like two matching pieces of jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. Another evidence would be structural and lithological evidence. Structural evidence show that there are same structures from one ton age to another. Such structures include four mountains, shields, and mountain chains. Lithological evidence show that there are matching rock types on opposing sides of the boundary. Such evidence can be found in the boundaries of India and Australia. Stratigraphy, which is the sequence of rock types, helps strengthen this evidence. Paleomagnetic evidence is the rock magnetism of different continents relative to the magnetic fields during the geologic period of time at which they were formed. Despite the polar wandering curves, it is certain that the continents have moved relative to one another and the magnetic poles have not shifted a lot. Paleoclimatic evidence is when rocks are found where they were unlikely to have been formed, indicating that the continents they rest upon have drifted. Such evidence can be seen from telites, which are glacially deposited rocks. Telites are found in the southern countries where they could not have been formed. Wagner's theory explains nicely how the glaciers have moved and the telites' incorrect positions. The distribution of coralline rocks also show paleoclimatic evidence. Lastly, paleoontological evidence is the distribution of fossil evidence over the continents. The ancient species of life may undergo divergence of species. Convergence of species. By studying fossil populations and trends, the pattern of land movement through geological time can be established. The weakness of the theory was that Wagner was not regarded as an expert in the field of study, and he was unable to explain how continents were able to drift across the ocean floor to their present locations. In the 1950s, it was found that the ocean basins were developed by a great mid-oceanic ridge. The crest of the ridge was splitting apart due to tension, and that the ocean basins were relatively young. These evidences prompted Henry Hess, a noted geologist from Princeton University, to propose the theory of sea floor spreading. He postulated that thermal convection currents in the mantle spread the ocean floors apart. 
magma from the mantle goes through the fractures produced to become new oceanic crust. At the same time, continents were carried away from the oceanic ridge and toward deep sea trenches. The oceanic crust descends into the mantle with the descending convection current and is reabsorbed. The entire ocean floor is completely regenerated in 200 or 300 million years. Evidences supporting his hypothesis were geothermal heat, where temperatures were a lot higher at mid-oceanic ridges due to the heat produced by injection of mantle material. And seismicity, where mid-oceanic ridges are centers of activity for earthquakes due to crustal movement. Hess, under the influence of Hugo Benioff, proposed that the deep ocean trenches were zones where crust was absorbed and that Benioff zones marked the lines of disturbance. Evidences supporting his hypothesis are geothermal heat, where temperatures were lower at deep ocean trenches due to the cold crust descending into the mantle and cooling the mantle. The gravity at trenches were also lower. Other evidences supporting the modern theory of plate tectonics include rock magnetism, comprising of the reversal of magnetic poles, and the vine matthew hypothesis, the dating of volcanic activity, and evidence from sediments on the ocean floor. Although Hess was a noted geologist, there is weakness in his theory. The seafloor spreading hypothesis cannot explain the complex global movements of ridges and trenches. For various reasons, Africa is believed to have held its present position for a considerable geological period. This means that the Mid-Atlantic and Mid-Indianic ocean ridges must be moving away from each other. They could not therefore hold static positions above rising limbs of convection cells. Hess theory needs further modification if it is to explain this and other phenomena. Thank you and have a nice day. Goodbye.